Hi, welcome to Planetary Calendars Astro Portraits. I'm Ralph Demetrius, one of the calendar's astrologers. This is part of our series on musicians. And this one is about Beyonce Knowles, which I have to admit is probably a bit of a favorite of mine, even though I don't listen to her music a lot, but partially because, like me, she is a Virgoin. And like me, she has her moon in Scorpio. <laughs> and like me, she has her Mars in Leo. So you can probably barely tell us apart, right? I mean, <laughs> put the two of us side by side and just, you know, you get stuck, which is which, which is which. So, but she's, it's a fantastic chart. And this person, no matter what she did, she was going to be an artist. You, there was no way around that. She was going to be an artist. Why do I say that? She has Libra rising, and Libra is the classic sign for the arts, as is Taurus. But it's different. Libra is about creating harmony. It's about finding common ground with other people. It's about, you know, we always say, never ask a Libran, do they want to go out to lunch? Because they'll take forever <laughs> to decide. What you do is you say, I'm going out to lunch. Do you want to come? And they can decide yes, yes or no. And in fact, if you know where you want to go, so much the better. They just reduce the number of, you know, times they have to balance it because every every question that comes up has to be balanced where do, do where, you know do they really want me to come you know do they do they really uh they really want to go to that restaurant are they just saying that because it's me you know so it's a whole thing so reduce it so having libra rising this is a person who takes a long time to make up her mind but she always wants to do things in partnership and of course she first came to you know success with destiny's child as part of a group and then later on, you know, now she's a, a supposedly a single artist, but you can tell that her partnership with her husband is very, very strong. You know, it's very cohesive. And she still works with a big team of people. The Virgo is in the 12th house, and she has the Virgo conjunct Ceres. Ceres is the largest of the asteroids in the asteroid belt. It's kind of like, I always say, it's like the gypsy queen. You know, or you might say that the queen of the of the of the uh, nomads, you know, she's the one who herds everybody. So this is someone who just naturally herds people. You know, like if you have a dog that's a herding dog, they hate to have anyone stand in front of them. They're their kids around because they want to watch all the kids because they have to herd them. She does this naturally. She just like is always kind of watching out for everybody around her. She can't help it. And it's one of the endearing qualities around her. Because it's in the 12th house, it means she has a natural affinity to the studio. This 12th house is the studio. She's done quite a few movies, and she's been very good in them. She really thrives in that protected environment, you know, where you're not subject to, you know, the, the, the craziness. The fact that she's able to go on stage so effectively, well, that goes back to having Venus conjunct the rising. Venus in Libra, in rulership, conjunct the rising, partile, same degree. There's no point when she shows up on the scene where you don't know that this is a beautiful woman, that she's just charming. She's, this is like having Aphrodite show up on your steps to a certain extent. She just re resonates with that. She has Pluto at 22 degrees, two degrees away. So once again, it's very powerful. It's deep. It's a very deep energy. And Vesta at 15 degrees, Libra. So it's the archetypal fe feminine. Vesta is an asteroid that deals with the archetypal feminine. It's about having a mission. So this is someone who has a very strong sense of mission. When you have Vesta near the rising, you have a very strong. Everything you do is geared to what's my mission in this purpose. And then Jupiter at 12 degrees Libra conjuncts Saturn. So once again, this expansiveness, this tremendous optimism. She arrives with this tremendous optimism, not just about what she can do. It's about what we can do. What can we do together? Because it's Jupiter in Libra, and then it's Saturn in Libra, which is the exalted position. So you have Venus in rulership and Saturn exalted, right? The two powerful positions that are saying, what can we accomplish? And with Saturn and Libra, you can depend on me to be there when we do it. I will be responsible. Combined with Jupiter is saying, we're going to put everything into it. We're going to leave nothing 
I think saying, you know, don't leave anything on the field kind of thing. You know, like they're going to, you know, 100%. And then she has Mercury in Libra, which, of course, drives people crazy because she takes forever to make up her mind. But she does make up her mind. And she was always concerned about the people around her. Her moon is in the second house. And it is in Scorpio. What's interesting is she has a quality that is found a lot of times in people who become what you'd call stars. She has Uranus conjunct the moon. And anytime, and we find a lot of times with people, and we've thought with the action actors as well, and actresses, people who really had like star quality, you had Uranus conjunct the moon or the sun or the rising usually. Uranus is a planet you can't see without a telescope, except in very rare circumstances, and it sizzles. It's a lot about the first section of the ore there. It's just, it's about electricity. And so it gives a lot of charge. Whenever you're around them, they're just very exciting. You know, a little disrupting, <laughs> you know, not calming. And Scorp the moon of Scorpio is not, it's not a calm position like Taurus, like the moon of Taurus, the exalted position. It's the fall position. The moon of Scorpio is the person you want to tell your secrets to. You know why? They'll never tell anybody else. It's, it falls into a hole when it gets to them because they feel it powerfully and deeply. You know, it's a, it's a very deep position. Um... She has Juno there as well, once again, this relationship. And the moon in the second house is a very strong position, generally speaking. Remember, the moon is exalted in Taurus, the second house. So it's very comfortable uh, in that position. So she has this deep emotional nature. So things really matter to her. It also gives her having the moon in the second house has a, a really good with money. She really understands how to manage money well and how to manage her resources. The moon in the second house, the second house is the voice. She manages the resource of her voice and her performance and energy really strategically. Scorpio is always strategic. The Mars is up in the um, 11th house, the areas of friends. It means she's very, it's Mars and Leo. She's very generous with her friends. The Mars is conjunct the North Node. It's what she loves being generous to her friends. And when you put her on stage, once it being up being in the community, she is a natural performer. The Mars and Leo is, is a, a natural performer position. It loves being on stage. It can't help itself. They say, I think that when they list the reasons people are afraid of things, the different things people are afraid of, that public speaking comes above death. <laughs> and that's true for like 90% of the people. There's about a smaller percentage of people who feel perfectly comfortable doing that. And she's one of those people. Between Venus rising, people always like her. She assumes with Venus rising and Jupiter there that people are going to like her. They always have. <laughs> They've always thought she was sweet and charming and cute and whatever. They've always thought that. And then she has Mars and Leo that she can bring a lot of energy to that. What's fascinating with this chart is that everything is in the Eastern Hemisphere. Eastern Hemisphere is where you start stuff. Eastern Hemisphere is about me. It's about my energy. She has initiated stuff her whole life. But because of the, the powerful, it's called a stellium, when you have multiple planets on one sign, that stellium in Libra, she's always initiated by finding partners. I, we really, I really want to do this. You should help me. <laughs> we should do this together. She's never been about, I got to stand out. It's always been, we could do great with this, but she's been the mode of power behind it. She's the mode, she's the starter. It's really a, a, a powerful, powerful chart. And what's interesting is that her midheaven is in Cancer, a very, very feminine sign. It means it goes back to that moon in Scorpio. Amazingly enough that to a certain extent, she kind of sees her career as being a mom. You know, mothering people. And remember I said about that series, Conjunct That Son? She naturally herds people and mothers them. It's, she sees that as her career. Her, her approach to her work, her career is distinctly feminine. It's distinctly the mother. She mothers her team. And when she arrives on the scene, there's no question that this is a woman of substance. But that's Beyonce. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting. We're using her as the set point because she's such a quintessential artist to see what are the patterns we're going to see as we go along and look at these other these other artists along the way. What's interesting? One I should one little final point. 
one of the things you do have over in the um, the seventh house, which is the partnership house, and with all the stuff in Libra, you got to look at the seventh house, right? You can't just say, oh, partners don't matter. Of course, partners are everything. Over there, she has Aries, of course, so she would tend to marry someone very distinctive, right? But she has um, Selena over there. It's a nodal point, and it's a point of charm, which means that in partnership, she's very charming. She's very loving. But she would also find someone who was also very charming and loving as well, which is a very nice factor. With Aeneas Astraeus over there, which oftentimes relates to legal issues. So you got a funny feeling that when she got married, there was a very careful contract worked out <laughs> before, they, before, before they got the marriage license. There was some other contract be, besides the marriage license, which makes sense with a person that is this successful. But they're both, both people in the couple are very, very successful. So a fascinating chart and a good place to start the series. So please come see us on Tuesdays when we do our portraits. Uh, come see us on Fridays when we do our forecast for the coming week. You can find those at Planetary Calendar Astrology. Please subscribe. It's a big help. And when you get there, you know, click that little bell and you'll be reminded when the forecasts come up each week. Uh, if you don't have your calendars or you don't have your astrology book so you can learn more about astrology, you can find those at Planetary Calendar Dot com. Until next time, be well.